according to the UN, South Africa by 2100 would have close to about 67 million people. And 75% of these people, about 45, 48 million people, are going to be living in urban areas. So we think we have problems now. Joburg itself by 2020 will have a low growth rate of about 3%, but really we're going to have about 5.8 million people. So if you imagine where we are now sitting at about 4.8 million people, in the next five years, we're going to grow by an additional million people. So this is raising huge challenges around how do we provide housing, transport, infrastructure for this growing population. What's very, very interesting is how we begin to manage the city. And technology and this whole smart city concept is fundamentally about how we begin to understand how we use technology to manage this. Okay? And there's some really sticky problems that we end up with. But that's not the main problem. The biggest problem that we're facing is what we call the urbanization of poverty. So I've been tracking trends over the last 10 years using StatsSA data, and 70% of all people who have come to the city, living now in Johannesburg, earn between 1,500 rand and between 2,500 rand a month. Okay? So what's the problem and the challenge? We, we've got this like really crazy title, the most unequal city in the world. We just knocked Rio de Janeiro off, I think, four years ago. They used to hold the title, not something to, you know, to scream out to the world. But fundamentally, the city as we see it, and Joburg as we see it, is undergoing this massive change. So this is not unusual. Globally, this is happening. In Africa, this is happening. We're the fastest urbanizing continent. But what is significant, I guess, for the South African situation is that we really need to figure out how to get this right. So I was hard pressed when I was thinking about putting this talk together, about talking about all the great things technology can bring, and it does, without really understanding how we're going to harness it to deal with some fundamental problems around unemployment and poverty. So here's a couple of things that happen. The smart city, if I can go into it, was really fueled, and Solomon and all the other speakers spoke about it, by the convergence of a whole lot of technologies that started way back when. It's a 50-year story, right? So in the US, the military started inventing sensors that you could put on military tanks to measure the structural integrity of these tanks. And then the engineers said, well, maybe we can use this for a bridge. <laughs> And maybe we can understand how to measure the structural integrity of our urban infrastructure. And so this spawned a whole lot of innovation. And then 20 years later, we had network systems that were growing. And all of a sudden, people said, but hey, the city is a place that we can generate a whole lot of data from that we can measure and analyze. And this is the smart city concept. So in 2005, this really started accelerating, right? But here's the thing, and here's, here's the crack of why it's, it's, it's so important now. With 5.8 million people in Johannesburg, with 65 million people in 2100, all of these people in cities, we're generating a hell of a lot of innovation, but a hell of a lot of complexity as well. And what the smart city offers in technology office, which is so sexy and so alluring, is the possibility to debunk this complexity and make sense of it and just organize our lives in cities, right? right? So, so what does it give us the possibility of? No longer standing in long queues at home affairs, right? Um, you know, we can really sort out our balance in the grid, like ESCOM, you know. Really, what we've seen is that technology provides a way to get us out of this really, really sticky mess of managing our cities. Um, so smart cities are places where information technology is combined with infrastructure, architecture, everyday objects to address, and this is what it should be, to address fundamentally our social, economic, and environmental problems. The other important opportunity, which I touched on earlier, is accountability. And you know, when you speak to politicians about smart cities, they say, 
we can actually make our citizens believe we're doing what we said we were going to do because we can optimize our services, we can deliver services efficiently to them. You know, we can tell you how many commuters are moving through how train stations on a daily basis. We can optimize our services. We can have less trains running through off-peak periods and really plan everything. And we can deliver fantastic service to our citizens. And that's the other allure of, this, of the smart city concept. And so, really, the smart city concept where we are now can't work, and Solomon touched on this, without municipal management in place. Because technology is not going to replace poor management. And so fundamentally, the challenge that we need to address is how do we get these two things working together? Thank you.